<laughs> so well anyway, I'm starting to get bored of watching filament dry and listening to the interferences the printer is making. So I think we should um, go take a look at the new turbo brick for a change. So let's see when this doesn't start. Oh, it did. So let's see, here we have the first turbo brick. Oh, you can't see anything, but uh, neither can I. Uh, fucking tinted windows. Let's see. Uh, can it be that one? Nope, that's uh, something else. Uh, remote. Don't know. Wait a second. I was pretty sure I saw it in this car not too long ago. Spearhead. Hmm. Well, if you see it, you better tell me, so I'm not searching for it for nothing. Hmm. Well, I found this one. That's almost as good as what we need, but not quite. Uh, it's just a bit set. I've been looking for that. But, um, yep. Hidden in plain sight. So well, let's go up to the car. So well, here it is. Another turbo brick. <laughs> um, I seem to have something for import cars, because uh, all cars I own now are imported, uh, including this one. Which means it has the 2 liter full, full pressure turbo. I don't know what it's called, but it's, they get lighter, tur another turbo ver version that doesn't make as much power and runs less boost. This is the more powered one. I think it has 155 horses from factory. We're gonna... This one has supposed to be tuned to make a bit more. But um, we're gonna figure out what's going on with it. Um, the heater core is blown, so I am... Uh, and it builds pressure in the cooling system, so I'm suspecting a blown head gasket. It's also awfully down on power. And uh, so we're going to take a compression test and see the, what, which well values we get. So well, we're going to start with the compression test. So for that we're basically just going to unhook this thing. Which means no more spark. And um, take all the plugs out and uh, we'll have a look on how they look as well. I'll be back. So, well, the first cylinder I took out definitely seems like the one that wasn't running, or it has some serious issue. Yep, yeah, let's go on to the other ones. Plugs are equally oily and dirty, so it doesn't look like we have coolant or anything in any specific cylinder, which is a good sign. But I also noticed this car smokes a little bit when on the startup. And uh, you would expect that to be the turbo, but the turbo looks as clean. And well, it has a little bit of play, but uh, <laughs> man, I think the one in the turbo brick is worse. The first one also, to say. So, let's do a compression test. So, I just realized I'm alone, so I'm gonna go build a Lone Wolf 9000 and then I'll be back. So, well, here we go. A dangerous version of the Lone Wolf 9000. <laughs> yeah, if you watch the guy who calls him that, that's a great, a great person. So and this is the absolute cheapest uh, compression tester that uh, Bill Thema could um, get me. So we're basically gonna do this and then we're gonna just crank the engine. So 
So, cylinder one has about uh, nine, yeah, about nine bars of compression. Remember that. That's a pretty good value. So well the Shippo tester broke, that cylinder 2 also has 9 bars, let me just get in the car and get the thing that fell off, uh, the rubber thing. So, let's see cylinder number 3. That one also has about 9 kilos, that's pretty good. So that one is a bit higher than the other ones, that's interesting, but I think that's fine, it's just some carbon build up or something, it's not noticeably more. Which means we have other issues than head gaskets, I would think. Or the fourth cylinder is okay and the other three are blown, who knows. But uh, I would say this means that uh, we have another plug in the cooling system. Since you know you have this little hose that runs from the radiator to the reservoir, uh, that might, might that was plugged and it might still be plugged. So we're gonna play around with that for a bit, I think. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna flush the coolant system and uh, check over the ignition system. And hopefully that's where our power issue is. Could also be a clogged fuel filter, who knows. So well, we've been checking about everything and taking a few test rides. And uh, so far it doesn't seem to be building any major pressure in the cooling system anymore. And um, as you can see I checked the engine, so the camshaft is alright. I checked the uh, boost leaks, can't find any. I checked uh, this one, I don't know what it's called, but it's a bypass valve for the boost and uh, that's alright, they usually crack in the rubber seal. And I fucking found a problem, wastegate isn't even connected. I, get, I don't think I can show you that, but I'm gonna, wait, I'm gonna have to wait till the cars cool down a bit and have a test uh, to put that in, putting that back. Most likely though, it's gonna start building pressure in the cooling system again once it runs on boost properly. So we're gonna find that out pretty soon.